If you have ever been to Dubai, you know it's unlike any other city in the world. Dubai has attracted global attention through large construction projects and sports events, in particular the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. And due to wealth from oil and business, Dubai only stands to become more impressive as time progresses. Like a city out of a science fiction novel, Dubai grew out of the desert at a miraculous speed. The city has seen a 5,000% population increase since the 1960s and shows no signs of stopping. But the craziest part of Dubai is not its skyscrapers or its oil tycoons. In reality, it's the one-of-a-kind, hyper-futuristic police force. It's hard to know where to begin with this legendary police squad. For starters, the 15,000-strong unit has apparently started training its officers how to pilot a new flying motorbike. That's right, Dubai drivers might get pulled over by a flying bike cop if they make a false move. The vehicles are expected to be in action in just over a year's time, coinciding with Expo 2020, the Festival of Human Ingenuity, which Dubai won the right to host. Each S3 2019 hoverbike costs $150,000, though Hoversurf has gifted Dubai police its first example to allow training to begin and to help get the promotional ball rolling. The two parties signed a partnership agreement in late 2017. Based on a prototype previously made from aluminum, the body of the electric vertical takeoff and landing bike is a one-piece carbon fiber composite, which both reduces the weight and adds structural rigidity. The new curb weight, now just 253 pounds, means Hoversurf has been able to install a more capacious battery battery discharging 12.3 kilowatts as part of the S3 2019's hybrid powertrain. This also allows the drone, restricted by law to a 96 km per hour speed limit and an altitude of 16 feet, to fly for up to 40 minutes on what the company calls drone mode. And while the flying motorcycles put the Dubai police force in the headlines recently, this isn't their first foray into exciting vehicles. It all started back in April 2013, when they announced they would be adding a Lamborghini Aventador to the fleet. This was the obvious choice if you were in the market for a maximum wow factor mainstream supercar back then. So it came natural, even if the car came with a $350,000 price tag. They also added a $200,000 McLaren MP412C with a max speed of 207 miles per hour to the fleet. Complete with flashing lights, it can accelerate from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 3.1 seconds. The custom-made vehicle, painted in Dubai's flagship green and white colors, carries a 2020 number plate to celebrate the nation's successful World Expo 2020 bid, which will showcase business, creative, and economic innovation in the country to millions of visitors. Subsequently, the officials announced that they would also add a Ferrari, and it wasn't long until we got to see that they went for something a bit more practical than the Aventador, going for the four-seat and just as four-wheel driven Ferrari FF. To make things even more exciting, it was announced that the FF would only be driven by women. After seeing an Aventador and an FF dress up in the Dubai police uniform, the news that they were also getting a Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG and a Bentley Continental GT didn't shock anybody. Most of those who reported it didn't even bother to mention it was the V12 model, not the V8. The cars cost $150,000 and $200,000 respectively. The next choice was rather unexpected, with the Dubai police force welcoming one of the 77 units of the Aston Martin 177, which comes at a cool $1.9 million. The Chevrolet Camaro SS that followed afterward may have seemed like a joke coming after all those big names, but it's still cooler than most police cars on planet Earth and costs 50 grand. And finally, in 2017, the Dubai police force outdid themselves by welcoming the world's fastest police car into their flight, a Bugatti Veyron. The car has quickly become the flagship of the fleet, with a staggering top speed of 253 miles per hour. Its 16-cylinder engine produces 1,000 horsepower, sending it from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.5 seconds. The previous record holder belonged to the Italian police force, the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4, which has a top speed of 230 miles per hour. The Veyron costs more than $1.7 million, and officials report that it costs $20,000 just to get the oil changed in this luxury machine. But Dubai's police super fleet isn't used for high-speed chases down Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Boulevard, or very many police duties at all for that matter. Instead, the cars cruise around the Dubai Mali area and Jumeirah Beach residents in search of tourists and attention. The role of the fleet is to break down barriers between the police and the public, explains Major Sultan Almari of Dubai Police's General Department of Transport and Rescue. We're not looking to just show off with the car. We're looking to show tourists how friendly the police is here in Dubai, Sultan told CNN. We are looking for ways to connect with people all the time. While multilingualism and good communication skills are requirements for the job, drivers also need to have a good sense of humor. 
Sultan says people often jokingly ask the police to arrest them so they get to ride in the cars. Since the beginning, car makers have been vying for a spot on the fleet, which they see as an opportunity to market their own brand, according to an executive from a premium car manufacturer. It's very prestigious to have the Dubai police as your customer, and it's something that all the dealerships will fight for, he said. Once you've spent many years trying to get into a fleet, you want to stay in, and everybody else is trying to get in. When it comes to selecting the cars, Sultan explains that the Dubai police looks for cars that are making a buzz in the media. But in addition to speed, its strategy is to have hybrid or electric cars make up at least 25% of government fleet cars by 2030. Two BMW i8s and three Porsche Panamera SE hybrids have already been added to the police fleet. It's good for them to consider the environment, but let's also remember that the police force in Dubai spends more on each of their supercars than it costs to send a child to college in the United States. There is so much money flying around Dubai that some people accuse the police force of being wasteful. In fact, a general in the Dubai police force makes only about 25,000 US dollars a year, and a cadet only makes between 10 to 15,000 US dollars a year. Needless to say, even if the police force pooled all of their salaries, they couldn't buy any of these luxury cars anytime soon. However, the Dubai police force strives to be the most progressive of all Arabic police forces and aims for high education standards amongst its personnel. The force was the first to use many new law enforcement techniques, including electronic fingerprinting and DNA testing. The force was also the first to use GPS systems to locate stolen vehicles. The force has announced that it plans to deploy its first robot police officer by May 2019, and that their ambition is to have 25 percent of the force consists of robotic officers by 2030, as well as to operate a smart police station that won't require human employees. In addition, the force was the first to create a human rights department, as well as the first to employ a community policing program. As part of their futuristic image, they have poured millions of dollars into the General Department of Artificial Intelligence. This department is another integral part of the police force, as well as being the most recent department to be created. It was established in 2001 as part of the aims of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, to form a totally electronic government. In 2008, 30% of UAE nationals were assigned to the work in the e-services department to fulfill their duty. In 2014, Director General Khalid Nasser Al Razuki introduced Google Glass to the police force to issue fines and identify wanted cars. In 2018, the department was renamed to correspond to the new government direction toward artificial intelligence. But despite their efforts to move into the 21st century, the police department has been at the center of numerous controversies. The police in Dubai have long been accused of brutality, including the practice of torture leading to serious injury as well as death. In 2011, British tourist Lee Bradley Brown was arrested by the Dubai police and died in prison after six days of custody in a controversial manner. Police have arrested many people in recent years for posting humorous or satirical videos on the internet. Anyone posting material deemed offensive to Islam, the government, or to the royal families are subject to arrest. Police have also been accused of using excessive force when dealing with protesters or prisoners. Freedom of speech in Dubai is limited, with both residents and citizens facing severe sanctions from the government for speaking out against the royal family or local laws and culture. Most of the low-paid laborers are victims of human trafficking or forced labor, while some women are even trafficked into the growing sex trade in Dubai, a center of human trafficking and prostitution. However, statistically, Dubai is the ninth safest city in the world. There seems to be a misuse of power, but the police are still effectively preventing violent crime. This is impressive because not very long ago, Dubai was at the center of the world financial crisis and crime was rampant. In fact, luxury cars worth hundreds of thousands of dirhams can be found gathering dust on roadsides across Dubai, the remnants of the city-state's economic boom that was brought to an abrupt halt by the global financial crisis. The financial crisis forced many companies to slash jobs, and those made redundant who had taken advantage of easy credit during the boom found themselves unable to meet car payments. Dubai municipality said 1,476 vehicles were recovered in the year to July 31st, compared to 1,227 during the same period in 2008. In a sand pit in one affluent Dubai neighborhood, The Springs, a Land Rover Discovery was found motionless, covered in dust, with another one bites the dust written on a grimy side window. A few miles down the road in another residential district called Al Barsha, a Porsche Boxster was parked with keys in the ignition. On the passenger seat are documents for a 144,000 dirham loan taken out at the Dubai Bank. The number of vehicles that have been abandoned in Dubai have become the stuff of urban legend, with rumors of thousands of cars being dumped at the airport, as debt-laden high-flying execs flee the emirate after losing their jobs in the global financial crisis. But those times didn't last long, and now Dubai is back on top. 
The city-state is easily one of the world's fastest-growing economies. Dubai's gross domestic product is projected at US $107 billion, with a growth rate of 6.1% in 2014. Although a number of core elements of Dubai's trading infrastructure were built on the back of the oil industry, revenues from oil and natural gas account for less than 5% of the Emirates' revenues. It's estimated that Dubai produces 50,000 to 70,000 barrels of oil a day and substantial quantities of gas from offshore fields. The Emirates' share in the UAE's total gas revenues is about 2%. Dubai's oil reserves have diminished significantly and are expected to be exhausted in 20 years. Real estate and construction, trade, entrepot, and financial services are the largest contributors to Dubai's economy. So regardless of the naysayers, Dubai has more than enough tax revenue to fund an incredible host of police vehicles. Don't expect them to buy any more civilian cars in the near future. The chief of police says the fleet has brought the force an incalculable amount of good publicity, and they intend to pursue even more amazing vehicles in the coming years.